Welcome to the Pie Shed. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use something called Blip Builder from blipr.com. That is really, really useful uh, for creating some cool augmented reality. Um, cool products for things like the Cambridge Technicals, the new unit that will be in the 2016 spec, and kind of cool stuff that you can get Key Stage 3 um, producing to give them a taste of augmented reality too. So I started playing with Blipar a little while ago. I got a little bit more time to have a play with it today and uh, produce something that's quite cool. And hopefully, if I share this with you guys, um, you'll be able to have a, a cool experience with Blipar as well and uh, cut out some of the learning curves that I had along the way, I suppose. So first up, uh, this is the Blip Builder interface. Uh, and I've set a campaign up, what's called a campaign for my Year 12 Cambridge Technical class. Uh, and I've already built one here. So what I'm going to do is I'll build a small part of that um, now and then you'll be able to see a finished product in a little while um, as I replicate about four, well, four or five of the pages. So I'm going to create a new blip. So I'm going to call this new blip um, Super Heroes 2 because I've already made one. And I'm going to upload a trigger image, so a marker. So if you saw my Orasma video some time ago, these things need um, a trigger image. So I've collected all my media here and I've got a trigger image somewhere called Superheroes Marker. So I'm going to use that one there. So there's my trigger image. So if I, if I point a device over an image that looks like that, then it's going to trigger my um, augmented reality product and all the interaction that goes with it. So this isn't just a case of producing a product that just plays in front of you. These have got um, interactive elements as well. And you'll see what I mean as I go through. So we'll just create the blip using that image. And this is an online product as well. Um, I did contact Blipar to find out what the pricing structure was as far as using it for education is concerned. And the good news is for, for, for us who work in schools is it's free um, and always will remain so for education. So if you want to get your students creating augmented reality uh, for free, then this is a, a great product to do it with. Okay, so my blip's been created. It's just loading the page now. And this is your main stage. So these are all the um, elements that I've previously uploaded, all the tiny pieces I've uploaded. And this is my trigger image. So this is the stage where I'm going to put my um, put my stuff. I'm going to rename this sequence, and I'm going to call this one um, Superman, because I'm going to make this first sequence Superman-based. So I've got a suitable background for a, a Superman-type um, page or sequence. I'll just resize this. So there we go. So that's what's going to pop up. As soon as I put my device over the trigger image, this is the background that's going to be displayed. And I'm going to bring Superman in as well. And I'm going to have him somewhere over here. I know that goes off the stage, but don't worry, you'll see in a second. And we'll also have some... Uh, Stats for Superman. Well, Superman's quite cool. He's got a um, hundred on most of his stats, and I got these from Superheroes uh, Database dot com, which is quite cool if you're doing about superheroes, I suppose. Um, and then we've also got a home button, which will be useful to get us back home. So we'll just resize that one. And I guess for Superman, we'll have some kind of sound effect. Got some sound effects loaded in as well. The trick to this is collecting all your media before you start. If you don't have the media before you start, then it can be a little bit monotonous. So this is the basic setup of my first sequence. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to click on this button down here, Scene Objects. 
that allows me to do some cool stuff. So I'm going to drag an animation onto Superman and I'm going to say he comes in from left to right. I can decide how long that takes. It can take a long time or it can zip in quite quickly. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the stats, but this time I'm going to have those bounce in, do something a little bit different. And that's going to come after Superman's come in. A little bit of a pause, and it's not going to take so long. And I can play this just to see what it might look like. There you go. That's what the sequence might look like um, when this is running. And then if I just move that back down there and get rid of the scene objects, the back button, uh, I'll link that up shortly to a, a home scene. So let's just create a home scene to go back to because the, we want something to go back to after the uh, when after the trigger image has been activated. We'll have some kind of home scene that looks a little bit like this. And we'll have some buttons on here that we can use. to call up our superheroes. So we did Superman before, so I'm gonna drag a Superman button over here. We'll have to resize them when they uh, pop up. So I'm just gonna put Superman down there. And I'm gonna link this particular icon using the interactions button here. So that if somebody taps that icon, it's going to go to a new sequence. You can do lots of cool things here. <clears throat> you can put sound effects in. You can help photo booth. You can e email, call, whatever you want to do. Calendar. But I'm, I'm going to switch to a new sequence. And the sequence I'm going to choose is Superman, which is the one I've just made. Okay, so that's going to work on that one. And then we'll just bring this tab over here. That's the first thing that we want to load. And then if I go back here, the back button we will link to a sequence which is home. And the sound effect, we will link to a sound file that's already been uploaded. So we'll choose one, or you can upload new ones if you want to. I'll just wait for these to pop up. So that's look up in the sky. And I'm just gonna save this. So at the moment, we've just got a home scene that will pop up as soon as our trigger image is activated. And if somebody presses the Superman icon there, this scene will activate. And we know what this scene will look like because it will do this kind of thing. And then if they press the uh, sound effects button, it's going to play the look up in the sky uh, sound effect. So what I'll do, I'll just pause this right now and I'll show you it in action. But just before I do that, just publish that one. And it gives you some numbers. You need to download a, an app called Blipar. Um, it will give you a blip code that you can use. If you've got more than one uh, blip, I suppose if you've got a class, then you can have a campaign code. So if you're the teacher, you could just type in 20641 in this instance, um, and you would see all the blips for this particular campaign. Or if you just wanted to look at that individual blip, then you just type in 72435. I'm going to click Publish. I can put a test here. So for um, test purposes, I'm just going to type in uh, Pie Shed. And we'll click Publish. And then what I'll do is I'll show you how to get that working on your, uh, on your devices. Welcome back. As you can see, I've got the uh, trigger image that we set already on the desktop to go. And on my uh, phone, I've got Blipar already uh, ready to go. Just a couple of things on Blipar. Useful to, um, in the settings, turn off Explorer mode if that's on, because it will start identifying objects uh, around you. And then in the enter code, you must enter the code of the blip that you're looking for. So ours was pie shed, so that's now done. And it says tap here to start blipping. So now, 
as I hold this up, this will be fun because I've only got one hand uh, free. So as I hold this up in front of the image now, what should happen is the augmented reality that we created should load up in front of the um, in front of the trigger image which it has, which is quite cool. So as I move that around, you can see that the uh, the augmented reality is moving as well. Now the good thing about this is I don't need to keep this pointing at it to get it to work. So if I, now it's been activated, I can move the phone away and the augmented reality that was produced or what we made is still there. So I can now click the Superman icon and Superman pops in with all these stats. I can click the sound effects button. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And I can click the home button to go back. And there we go. So the augmented reality is, uh, is now stored on that device, so I can close it. And if I went back into the history, if I wanted to look again at that blip another time in the future without the trigger image, then I could quite easily just click on that one again and it would load it up. What you can also do, if I just turn the phone that way, is you can spin these round and zoom in a little bit. And you can kind of get a, you can see the 3D effect that's happening with these. So as, as I said before, it doesn't matter that these are popping out the screen because you can see the buttons look uh, kind of raised and it's uh, it's quite cool. So what I'll do now is I'll just cut back to the the, uh, the online app and I'll show you um, how I've created other pages in a similar way and then uh, produced a whole product. So I'll bring the uh the blip our website back up and here is the product that we started making i'm just going to come out of this one for a second and go to the main screen that's got the second one or the first one on so there's the one that we were just making this is one in good old-fashioned style that i made earlier in the exact same way the only difference is this has got the extra pages added so there's no other um, skills or techniques I've used in any of this stuff that you're about to see now, other than what you saw in the first section. Uh, I've just got more pages. So I've still got the Superman page, which is right there, but I've now added um, Iron Man, Hulk, Spider-Man, and Captain America. I'm going to put a sound effect for each one and put the, the different background for each one. And then on the home page, I put a different icon for each one too. So just in the same way as before, save it, publish it, uh, and then you can actually, if I click on this one, uh, publish, give it a few seconds. This one is called Superheroes uh, with no space. So you can have a look at that. You can actually type that in. If you download Blipar now on your devices, when you type in Superheroes, then you will also be able to... Um, experiment and, and, and play with the the augmented reality sequences that are that you've just seen uh, for those superheroes it does take a little bit of time to publish them depending on how much media you've got in there how big the images are what quality they are um, how many sound clips you've got and so on there is a maximum file size that comes up for blipar um, that tells you when you're close to reaching it not actually sure what the size is it doesn't indicate what it is uh, specifically but it does give you that warning message so just be careful if you are planning uh, a kind of activity that may require large products then it's best to um, optimize all the images as we uh, we would hope so for the sizes they actually require to save uh, space on your blip so there we go that's published and we click publish and like i said before super heroes and i'll leave this up so you can have a look at it click publish and away you go hopefully that's giving you an idea of how to get started with it uh, and giving you a bit of inspiration to, to give it a go. Um, let me know how you get on. Any questions, give me a shout. See ya.